Hello and welcome back to the Wasteland everybody, welcome back to Fallout New Vegas where today we're going to be taking a look at our final pipe weapon. I did say that the last time when we were going with a pipe gun, but I was corrected later in the comments saying that I forgot the syringer. Which, yeah, that's true, this one is also a pipe weapon. And this one I have by far the least amount of problems with out of any of the pipe weapons, because this one looks like it would function since it's just an air gun. So the syringer is a fairly rare weapon. You can't actually get these very often in Fallout 4. You do have to go to specific locations that have the syringer. Vendors don't sell this and enemies don't carry this weapon. This weapon is sort of an experimental air gun that you can pick up and you can craft ammo for, which is interesting because no other weapon in this game actually uses different ammunition. It's just the syringer, which I really wish they would have added more ammunition in Fallout 4, like they did in New Vegas, like they did in the older games. That would have been cool and it would have made certain weapons a whole lot more viable, especially later on by just swapping out different ammos like they did in New Vegas. For the stats of the syringer, this one doesn't really do damage or it can do damage, so the damage depends on which ammo you load into it. Same thing goes with the damage per second. This very much depends on which ammo that you have loaded in. Some of them don't do any damage, some of them do damage over time. This one has 119 range, so quite long range. This one has 72 accuracy, also pretty good accuracy, costs 35 action points to be using in VATS, holds one shot in it, this is just a single shot break action rifle. So that's kind of interesting. And this weighs 6.2 weight, so it's not super heavy. It actually can't really get all that heavy, even with the heaviest mods thrown onto it. For the pros of the Syringer, this one is very unique. It's very different than most other weapons, and that's kind of its main pro that it has going for it. The cons of this, though, is that it does have low damage, and it has a low rate of fire. You can't really follow this up quickly, because the rate of fire is just so low. And that can be an issue, especially if you want to be trying to use this as a weapon. Unironically, the best perk to be using with this, at least if you do want to use it as a weapon, would be Basher and just beat things to death with the actual gun because the actual damaging syringes don't really do that much. Now rather than giving this a rating, let's talk about a modified version and what we would modify it with, and then let's talk about the ammos because that's really what makes or breaks the syringer. So for attachments, you have a barrel attachment and I would just recommend going with the stub barrel. Most of the time I'm just going to be using this for utility, so I just want it to be as light as possible. This makes it more lightweight than it otherwise would be. You could still stick with the short barrel that's normally on the syringer, or you could go with the long barrel if you want longer accuracy. Any of them are fine. I think the stub barrel is the best though, just because it's easy to carry. Same thing kind of goes with the stock. Usually I just keep the standard stock with the syringer because it weighs the least amount and you don't really need lots of accuracy with this gun. And then for sights, you can pick whatever sight you would like. Technically you get more damage if you have the scope on there, but since this one doesn't really do damage, it doesn't damage through effects, that doesn't matter either. So just pick whichever sights you like the most. I usually go with the glow sights because they're the easiest for me to see and I like the look of them the best. If you don't like that though, pick whatever other sight you would like to throw on here. Now let's go over the more interesting part of the syringer and its different ammos. So you have multiple different ammos that you can load into this and you can make any of these ammos at a workbench or at a chemistry station. So the first one is called Berserker. The Berserker syringe makes it so when you hit an enemy, it causes it to frenzy for two minutes. This one you need an antifreeze bottle, bourbon, and dirty water to use, and this one can't always work on all enemy types. It can only work on low-level enemies. This will cause them to frenzy and then attack other nearby enemies. But since this one is level limited, it's not as useful as it could be. If it had no level limit, it could be a whole lot better than what it is. This one's not bad, especially if you want to shoot into a group of enemies and have them all fight one another. This one is at least decent. Next one is called the Bleed Out Syringe, which this one you need one fiberglass and one oil to make. This one is one of the easier ones to make. This one does 30 bleed damage over its duration, and this is uh, 3 damage per second. This can stack multiple times because bleed can stack up the damage. The main problem with the syringe you're trying to stack up damage though is that it's still a single shot gun, so you'd still need to fire it, reload it, fire it again, and just keep doing this, and it's just not going to build up bleed very quickly. The 30 bleed damage is just not enough damage into the later game. In the early game, it's okay enough, but even then, it's still not the best. And you can usually out-bash damage the bleed, so that doesn't really bode too well for its usefulness. If you could make a fully automatic syringer, then yeah, the bleed out would probably be the strongest one. But since you can't do that, and you're just stuck to the single shot, it's just not going to be all that good. 
Next one is called the Bloatfly Larva. This syringe requires one Bloatfly Gland and one Psycho. And you shoot an enemy with this, and then when that enemy dies, it spawns into a Bloatfly. This can be kind of useful because, again, if you shoot this into something and then you shoot a Berserking Syringe into it and it dies, then it spawns the Bloatfly. The Bloatfly will likely attack anything around it, assuming that it's not other Bloatflies. This one can also be a little bit useful if you want to farm legendaries. Because if you see an enemy, you shoot them with this, uh, you kill it, the Bloatfly could spawn and it could spawn into a legendary Bloatfly, which you could farm for weapons or armor, whatever it might be. That's about the best use of this one and potentially getting you a little bit more damage on other enemies. Fourth syringe is called the Endanger All syringe. This one takes one acid, one medics, and one pencil in order to make. And this one reduces the target's damage resistance by 25% for two minutes. You get extra damage on a target. That can be kind of useful, especially if you're running into a very strong enemy. Something like a Mirelurk Queen could be a really good option to be firing this into. It's a very straightforward syringe, and this one does just buff your damage. So this one can be good, especially if you just want to only have this on you. As well as, like, the Medic's Pencil and uh, Acid aren't the hardest things to come by. Next syringe is called the Lock Joint Syringe. This one requires a Dirty Water, Lead, a Stingwing Barb, and two Tar Berries to make. And this one makes it so when you hit an enemy, you paralyze that enemy for 10 seconds. This one's kind of fun, but it's not very practical. All the stuff that you need to make it can be kind of difficult to come by, unless you just want to spawn these in. And even then, they're still not that great. 10 seconds of paralyzation is potentially strong. Paralyzing an enemy is very, very strong, but that's all it does. So if there's multiple enemies, this one might not be as useful. If it's just one enemy, it might just be faster to kill them. Otherwise, you could potentially paralyze legendary enemies and make it a little bit easier to kill them with this. Nonetheless, it's a very fun weapon to be using, if nothing else. Then we have the Mind Cloud Syringe. This one requires one Abraxo Cleaner, one Asbestos, and one Purified Water. And this one makes it so when you hit a target with it, they believe that you vanished for 30 seconds and cannot detect you, even when you're not actually sneaking. So this one just makes it so you can run past any enemy that you would like. It's kind of funny, but that's kind of all that it's useful for, unless you just want to do a pacifist run, and then something like this could be actually quite useful because you just walk past everything that's actually in your way. There's also the Pack Syringe, which is basically the same syringe as the previous one, where this one requires two Mute Fruit and one Nuka Cola. And this one makes it so whenever you shoot a target that would be violent to you, they are non-violent for 30 seconds. So they basically don't attack you at all. You can just go around and loot stuff then. Again, good for a pacifist run, but other than that, not really good for anything else. I, I guess if you wanted to shoot something kind of strong and then get a free hit in on it, that could be useful. Same thing goes with the previous range if you want to uh, get a free sneak hit on them, so sneak crits can be pretty good. Uh, it's kind of extra steps than what you would need to do, but it is something you can do. Then we have the Rad Scorpion Venom Syringe. This one just requires the one Rad Scorpion Stinger, so this one can be pretty easy to make, and this one deals 40 damage over its duration. This is 4 damage a second. The Venom can be stacked and you can deal okay damage to enemies, but it's similar to the Bleed where you just can't stack up enough of it quick enough. And even trying to switch back and forth between the, the Poison and the Bleed, you still don't do that much damage per second. So it's just not really worth it a lot of the time. And then our very last syringe is the Yellow Belly Syringe. This one requires one Antifreeze Bottle and one Fertilizer in order to make. And this one makes it so when you hit an enemy, it causes that enemy to flee away. Uh, this lasts for 30 seconds. This one can also be kind of useful if you're doing like a pacifist run. It's very similar to the previous ones where it just makes it so the enemies aren't attacking you. That can be kind of good. It can also be kind of useful if they're fighting multiple enemies amongst each other and you cause one of the stronger ones to get feared so that the other ones can kind of beat up on it. The Syringer is kind of awkward in just about every way that you use it, although it is a very fun weapon. For an overall rating for the Syringer, I'd probably put this thing into D tier. It's not really that useful as an actual weapon. If you want to kill stuff, there's just much better ways of killing things in Fallout 4 than trying to get these different Syringe effects to work on them. But if you are doing a specific themed run, it can be pretty fun, and it can be a fun weapon to have on you just to be making the syringes and then just try shooting stuff with them. Like making enemies flee or just running through an area because you have the pack syringes, causing enemies to be paralyzed, causing them to go berserk. There is a decent amount of utility that you can actually get out of the syringer, but it is very quirky. It's a very strange weapon. Tell me your thoughts on the syringer down in the comments below. I'd love to hear them. I hope you guys enjoyed this, and I'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye, everyone.